Now let's look at news here back home now. So the funeral of a 35-year-old woman and her three children will be held in the Jabavu locality in Port St. John's in the Eastern Cape today. The woman allegedly poisoned her four children with aluminium phosphide, also known as a tank pill, before taking her own life. Now one of the children survived the ordeal. The motive behind the murders and suicide, of course, is unknown. SABC News reporter Ngulego Nyembezi is live for us at the funeral in Jabavu. Ngulego, a good morning to you. I mean, this is definitely one of those stories that has not just shocked the nation but certainly the community in Jabavu as well I mean what are you hearing from your community members at this stage as we uh, see this uh, funeral taking place yeah thank you so much of course we are coming live from Jabavu uh, in Port here in the Eastern Cape it's a very sad uh, situation a sad incident where have just arrived now. Four bodies have just arrived and uh, will be buried right now. The mother and uh, her three children who were uh, allegedly poisoned. So now they are being uh, buried here at Tabavo. But now I'm joined uh, by the Kula Community Development Director. Can you tell us what he's feeling about uh, this uh, incident? Can you just come closer and so that you can tell us what is actually, what's your feeling around this? Because this is a sad situation. <clears throat> Today I'm just confused. I don't even. I can't even explain how I feel. Especially when I saw the old who managed to survive when their mother poisoned the four of them because she pretended as if she has already died and the mother could not strangle her uh, when she was doing so to the other three who could not survive. So when she cried as the bodies uh, arrived at the tent this morning. But I'm still asking what is exactly happening because it is becoming a trend Ngulego, that every day now we see women killing their own children. And I fail to understand because a female person would carry a child for a period of nine months and go through a painful labor period. To, to kill the child when a child is old enough. Which means then there are some programs that we need to look at. Because at some point people would blame a father who is absent, a father who is abusing a mother. But in this case there is a lot we need to dig down because the child is not comfortable even while she is sitting inside the tent. Okay, this is not the first incident. We had uh, another incident of similar nature in Bataworth whereby a young lady also killed, uh, strangled to that uh, uh, her own kids. One would associate this with the hunger or poverty. So what is your view on this? Definitely, because if you look at the number of four kids who were also killed by their mother, and you look at the Butterworth, I always say, all these mothers, when they talk, they think of their children, they love their kids. Maybe there's a point where a mother says, I want to kill myself, but I can't leave my kids behind. So let me make sure that I start by killing my own kids, then I take my own life. Because if I take my own life, I am not sure how will my kids survive when I leave them behind. I understand that you always on the ground. When you go around, are there any programs, poverty alleviation programs that, that are in existence in the rural areas? Because I understand that in the Eastern Cape, when you go down, deep down in the rural areas, that is where poverty lives. Definitely, the people of the Eastern Cape, in most areas where I travel to, where we run programs in, we, we, we happen to realize that people depend on social security. If they get child support grant, disability grant, old age grant, they don't look at agricultural programs where they would make means to survive. They depend on the grant, which is not enough. Because if you look at 5 or 10, 10 rand, which is child support grant, a child cannot survive on 5 or 10 rand for a period of 30 days. Which means then we have to go back and rope in all different government departments to say how best can we work together so that over and above the grant there is something else to sustain our families. Thank you very much, sir. That was uh, Mr.
uh, Petros Majola, who is the director of uh, Kula Community Development. You will remember that uh, this is not a, a first incident mm -hmm. here in the Eastern Cape. Uh, I think three months ago in Bata, uh, in, in Nobo, the, there was a lady there who just battered uh, her own children. Then he, she later killed herself. And then in Bata, last week, another woman killed uh, uh, her own uh, kids. And now here in, 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 Port, in Port St. John's, we are burying uh, a mother and her own three kids. A very sad situation. Back to you, Estidio. Yeah, it's, it, it is very sad. And good luck. I want to stay with you a little bit. Let's talk about the one child that did survive. And I'm hearing the gentleman there talking about how, how this child survived was by playing dead as the mother went about killing um, this child's siblings. I mean, what do we know about the age of this child and what happens to this uh, little one now? She is only 13 years old and then she survived this uh, ordeal. As the bodies uh, of her mother and the three kids were arriving here, she just uh, burst out, she cried out uh, because now she, I think now she's starting to, beginning to realize that uh, she could be among of the four bodies that were arriving now. So the situation is bad but she is still under the supervision of social workers. Yeah. Very, very sad indeed. Thank you so much for bringing us uh, that story nonetheless. Of course, that there is our reporter, Ngulego Ngembezi, speaking to us from Jabavu in the Eastern Cape.